SC Esports, they are the defending champions right now. They won in Seattle last season. However, they also faced off in the season before that, and that one United Gaming won. So it's gonna be a $20,000 war on our hands right here, right now. This could be the last war of this entire competition. United Gaming, if they take this win, they are the North American Snapdragon Pro Series champions. It's time for United Gaming versus SE Esports. Here we go. Ghost is starting us off with a Root Rider attack of his own. We did see a little bit of a zap action in here. Looks like maybe got out the monolith on the backside. As we get things going, the Queen is dealing with these clan castle troops. King is going in here and he's gonna have to go quick. That's gonna be the theme of these wars. You gotta go fast and you gotta put up three stars. They've been putting in so many perfect wars here. And when you're dealing with the top two teams in North America, you gotta play fast, you gotta play efficient. You can't waste anything on any part of the attack here. But look at this, he's gonna put it the root riders opposite of the King and Queen. And they're all gonna converge and meet each other at the end of the base there at the town hall. Here comes headhunters for the root riders to get past the defensive queen. Got that under control here. King and Queen are slowly down a little bit there, but he still has multiple abilities over there and he's still looking okay, but he's holding root riders and hog riders on standby that he starts to drop it across the top of the base there to make sure the rest of the pack continues to go directly forward. Everything can Converging into the center of this base does go ahead and freeze the double rick chicken and that poison tower before it throws. I really like that play of freezing the poison tower before it throws too much because then it's not going to be as effective. He will have to deal with poison from the town hall. Royal Champion is in there. All the roots are being healed up here with the Warden Eternal Tome. Now he's just going to get through this town hall. No more King or Queen ability, but Royal Champion does still have Seeking Shield. There's quite a bit of base here. I'm actually a little bit worried about this one, to be honest with you. Got the Royal Champion still moving. He's got extra troops on standby that he can use to support the defensive King. He's throwing in some more cleanup over the right there. Hog Rider and Super Barb go to the cannon. Gonna get some support right there. The Royal Champion engages the defensive King. He's got the Royal Champion with the haste vial, I assume. Uh, was right there to get the defensive King down a little bit faster into the last couple defenses here, but he is kind of fading. You're right. This one, this one might not goes through. I'm not 100% sure. He's still Fox really fast on time. RC is getting the last couple defenses down. Looks like he's got it under control here. Clocking in at a little bit slower than we'd like to see, but he does have it under control, and looks like he will go sub 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Looking at 40 seconds left on the clock there on the open attack for United Gaming. BJG is going to come in with the Zap Lalo, kind of his signature attack here. Did get some zaps going early on here. Did he get out uh, an Inferno Tower, maybe an Expo up top there and a big defense, maybe Eagle? Eagle, yep. Yeah, and we don't we don't normally watch and talk about the time so much here, but the track record of these teams has shown them getting perfect war after perfect war after perfect war on both sides. And so it is something that we are extremely conscious of because they are, at the, if they continue their previous chance, then we would almost definitely see a double perfect war unless somebody makes a major mistake. But it looks like the King ended up going to the outside of the base. He circles all the way around, but he goes back in a scatter shock of armor, so he's not out of action. Nope. Just kidding, he's not gonna go there, but the Queen should be able to get under control there. And it looks like we got the healer puppet there popping with the Queen ability to generate some extra support there as he is not gonna quite get that multi. This Queen is, she doesn't get this Expo and multi down. That could cascade into a very, very big problem for the Lalo. She will eventually get to the multi, but that bow is definitely gonna oh, redirect some right of the she's, oh. she's down! Wait, oh, wait a second. I thought she, he would, would be fine. Oh, this could be This is trouble. a problem. This, this is, is very, very big, big trouble. Big trouble, uh-oh. BJG, our first mistakes have been made for SE Esports. They come into this flawless so far with three perfect wars. He's still fine here, but he's got a lot of work to do to finish this base off with the defending world champion and that scattershot doing some work. He's got the balloons and the Phoenix in the core of the base there. They can potentially get that multi-inferno down. World champion getting the support of the freeze right there. Headhunters get through the defense of world champion. Balloons are swarming that area here. Phoenix still working. RC still has her ability, and she should be able to surge forward there and get down that multi-inferno. Not really concerned about the triple right now, but it is slowing down here a little bit towards the end, and you see the base building going to work here as they are able to get some slow down and push these attacks to be a little bit longer than what their averages have been against the other teams. But he pops the RC shield and does hit the last two storages at the bottom base there and tries to get done a little bit faster. Looking like this one did a clock in at a seven second advantage in the favor of SE Esports. If they can get it, 
uh, Nick specifically would be claiming his seventh Snapdragon Pro Series championship, and he and the rest of his team have more championship victories than everybody else here. But here's Nick, speak of the devil. He does go in with the Super Dragons as he's just going to go ahead and use Bat Spells to tank the air defenses. A couple of Black Air Bombs going out there, but they're going to Balloons, and Super Dragons stay nice and healthy as he puts in a Slammer and goes heavy towards the top corner, and he's at the closest way down towards the Town Hall without a blip to go after it directly. He does miss the air defense down there on the right-hand side. He was trying to get that out with the Baby Dragon and that Bat Spell that was tanking. We saw him use this with the Super Minion Bomb yesterday, which was super, super effective. But he's just going to keep his heroes kind of away while the Super Dragons work through the middle of the base, and then they're able to get towards that Clan Castle. Remember, if the Clan Castle is destroyed before any of the troops come out, then those troops will be destroyed with it. Super Dragons need to get in there before those heroes tuck in, and there we go. Super Dragons get the Town Hall, and they get the Clan Castle right here. Now the heroes just got to sweep through the back of the base. This is one of the faster attacks. This with E-Dragons can move really quickly through these bases. You can definitely, you can see the communication that the his teammates are giving him with the, like, that baby dragon to finish off the air defense on the right side. There was one shot. There's one dragon over to the far right, gets the Expo down and the defensive king. That's going to clear up his heroes to be able to have a lot less resistance into that area. Freezing up the defensive queen down south here. Royal Champion pushes in. She's got the haze file, surges its way forward, but gets wrecked by the defensive queen. Spirit Fox still working on the defensive queen, and Spirit Fox clunges right there to get her down. Queen still moving, ability to touch, but he needs to get these dragons to go back into the middle of the base there, and they are splitting up now. It is looking pretty fast here. I'm, th I'm gonna call right around two minutes here is where it's looking to end, but I think he might be faster than that. I think he needed to put the Royal Champion over on the right side. He could have gained some time back there if he put it on that cannon and let her work in with everything. I know he was trying to get that air defense down to protect those dragons, but ultimately the RC did not get much for him. I believe he had about 1 minute 13 seconds remaining on the clock, so super fast. But I think if he puts RC over there on that cannon and lets her just kind of converge with everything, it might have been a little bit more effective, maybe saved him four or five seconds there. Looks like he will land right by the town okay, hall. Okay, yep. He's gonna go ahead and clone up some super minions and will take out everything around the town hall first and then turn to actually go take it down. Looks like he's gonna get that entire area there wiped out. And if you get some air defenses on top of that, then that's his ice on the cake there. But honestly, the air defenses are kind of secondary. They just held out with the pathy for the Such fighters, so they don't have to go in that area. But, I mean, he's going to get the defensive king down as well, which is also a big pickup. Yeah, that was crazy good value from the super minion bomb. Not too much invested in that, but he does go ahead and gut out that whole town hall compartment. Now the root riders can go ahead and work through, and he uses those super barbarians on the left-hand side, clearing out some wow. of defenses just to push those root riders right through the middle. What are you seeing here? I'm seeing king and queen coming to the very bottom of the base. At the same time, the root riders are going to the top. You would expect that they would all go together, but why put all the firepower? power into one spot where we attack every single side of the wow. base at the exact same time and keep the attack time at an absolute bare minimum. Holy speed! Max has ripped his base to shreds. There's still almost two minutes on the clock and he's still holding a royal champion ability. Pops that sinking shield and locks this one in at under wow. a minute and 30. Final time, one minute and 20 Two seconds. Unbelievable. What the heck? Rigo Torres has more world championship appearances than any other player in North America. This is Earthquake out Boots again. Electro Dragons, Earthquake Boots, and Barbarian Puppet. He's going to go in with a completely off meta push here with the King as he works on the outside of the base there and he drags push to core. They saw him use these Earthquake Boots yesterday. The Earthquake Boots, no matter what level they were, they will destroy the walls, so we'll have to keep an eye on when he uses that ability, maybe try to push the king into the eagle compartment. He does have these E-Drags cooking through here. They do need to get through this town hall, if, or the CC rather, if possible. They do, C top, CC is down, excuse me, as I fumble through my work, Ooh, but that, this is cooking. Uh, E-Drag in the core there, just chained through the queen and ended up getting all of his threats down. Gonna get the Inferno down, gonna get the Ricochet wow. cannon down. Holy value out of that one last E-Drag in the core. Cleans it out, and now the Rogue Champion left no problem. Bravo moving through. Look at the speed of this one. If we thought the last one is fast, Rigo Cortores is cooking. Why is he? I don't understand why he's not using Rage Gem instead of the Earthquake Boots. He doesn't need those Earthquake Boots. Someone <laughs> get that man a Rage Gem, and this is even faster than it is. We're looking at a 1 minute 20 second, 1 minute 15 second attack. Oh, baby, it's 1 minute 17 wow. seconds. All right, keep the speed up here. Going in with the, the uh, Sui Lalo here. Going to dive into the very bottom of the base here to go after the Eagle Artillery. King, Queen, and Giants moving in there. Wall break in. A couple of Super Barbarians controlling their pathing and making sure they go forward here. Road Champion not delayed. She's deployed immediately over to the left side and will go into the Scattershot area, but 
Needs to get past that defensive world champion. He's got a skeleton spell there, giving her protection. Invisibility giving her more protection as she does power through. Nice. Looking pretty solid on the setup here, and it is really, really moving fast here. And that's what we like about the Lalo attacks in general. And the, the Sui Lalos are even faster than the Zap and the Skelly Dota Lalos Ooh. because there is no setup. You just full sand. I was going to say, keep an eye on this queen, but she does get those super minions down, does get the single target Inferno. Now Lalo is going to come through this town hall. He does have the king that it will pr protect the headhunters, or not protect, but destroy the headhunters rather as he's gonna have to get through that enemy queen does freeze the invisibility tower so that the wallow can get through there but it's gonna the activate tower, first. this is gonna be tricky he needs oh, to watch out the oh, he's gotta nice. one shot it. he's gotta one shot it invisibility tower goes off he got it they he got, got it, it. No, oh, no 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 uh oh down? Uh -oh. no it's not down, it's down. It's not down. Brad is in trouble here bash uh oh, oh no, no he's fine he's fine the, is he? it's down it's down it's down yeah it is down but what about the time what about the triple Oh boy, well, yeah, wait a second. He's got a scatter in the back. He's got spells. Oh, he's got spells. He's got spells. Yeah, still got spells, so he's fine. He's just. The time Ooh. might not be there. This will be a little bit slower than Rigo, but remember, they did have a little bit of an advantage. He will have to circle back for this. Ooh, this could actually be kind of slow. Yeah, that Inferno, I was going to say, standing could end up taking out a little bit of his cleanup over there. Luckily, the cleanup that is in the area is staying just out of the range of it. He's got the balloons, have to go back to that area, but with the no champion going down early, he doesn't have her oh, no. backside. Ward is the first to revive the single Inferno. He's going to take the shots at it. He does one shot it, and he's going to turn away. Oh, he's going to no. walk away from the cleanup that's cost him a lot of time. Oh, no. I was concerned about the triple initially, but now I'm looking at the clock here, ticking away, and I watch their oh. advantage evaporate. Oh my goodness, these balloons just keep staying away from this clan castle. Now the skeletons now are going to distract. This is way too slow. This is way too slow. It's crazy. That you Look at the disappointment in Van's face. You know he feels bad. It is such a heartbreak here that he gets this down in two minutes and what, 20 seconds, two minutes and 18 seconds. And he's, it's just not fast enough. Yeah, that's that's insane to even think about there, but that, that's, that's what you have oh to do. Oh my, Eric. Eric, United Gaming gained back a minute and a second there, so they are going to be in the advantage by about 28 seconds now. Right. Agent 33 coming in with Super Dragons. Similar setup here as uh, Nick had, and Nick's attack was really, really quick. So let's see if Agent can do the same. All right, 27 seconds in the lead unofficially. And we'll see if the Super Dragons are going to be able to get it done. Slammer with the Bat Spell goes into the air defense down south. Able to stay protected. No shots going in it. And he will go right through the Town Hall with the Super Dragons. And we saw the Super Dragons have been a lot of success there. Staying very, very fast in their war the other day, yesterday. And we're going to see if they can do it again here. But there's that Invisible Tower going off here. Dragons are going to be able to walk right past the Town Hall. They're going to avoid it for oh, now. Look at the splash. And then they're going to be able to turn back around there and then get away from it as he gets past the Town Hall. He's got the Healing Tome on the Warden. And so he's able to heal right into the Bolting Infernos and the Poison on the Town Hall. Stay nice and healthy here, Bash. The one thing that's really nice about these Super Dragon and Electro Dragon attacks that United's using is check this out. The CC goes down before it was a full CC pool. That is massive, especially when we're dealing with seconds here. Seconds per attack are going to matter. And this this one is cooking through here. He does still have a pretty big chunk of the base with that Tesla farm popping. The king is back there. Queen does not have ability, so Queen will go down to the Ricochet Cannon here. And he is actually kind of thinning out on troops, but does have Royal Champion. Now pops her Haste Vial. He's got to get through the enemy king. Did he get? Oh, he, his king's fighting the enemy king. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. I'm noticing something on the trap placement on these bases. I'm seeing a lot of internal black air bombs. Usually, we see black air bombs near the edge of the base there, and that is not how you end up facing dragons generally. Or when you when you go when you put the air bombs on the edge of the base, you end up having like balloons end up triggering them. But when you put the black air bombs in the core of the base, you end up being able to take out a lot of dragons there as they come out of the ward ability. Still clocking in very very fast. But no dragon survive. It's just the king and the world champion at the end, and it is another very fast attack here from United Gaming. Did you see the final time there? Was that one minute 17 remaining? I think it was. SE Esports has two attacks here. They have to make up a little bit of time here. So realistically, if they get like a 90 second attack here, maybe make up 13 seconds, that puts them in a nice spot. But again, that could force the issue. It's it's a lot on the line. It's a, a lot of pressure both ways. It is, and it, it's it, it's really interesting to see what they're deciding to run as defensive clan castle troops here, because if you run the ice golems, then you can stall up root riders and slow them down, potentially even stop them. But then then they, then they just go into an attack with like super dragons or air attacks, and then they destroy the clan castle building before the ice golems come out, and so they disable that, and they end up going faster as a result. So it just matters what comes out of the defensive CC and how they end up dealing with it. This one 
is going to be a ground attack going right through the town hall. He's got the healing tome on the warden and running the original world champion equipment on the seeking shield. But there goes Rock of Blues trying to go out there. And if that gets a clump of these root riders down early, like if those Rock of Blues get some strikes up, and he's kind of forced to run the ward ability early before he gets to the town hall to try to prevent the Rock of Blues from taking that giant clump of root riders down. That could have been a disaster, but he did manage it, I think, in the right way. And this is why sometimes you'll bring a heal with spell or two. So you can heal right there and you don't have to force that ward ability. I think he lost a couple of roots, maybe one or two there, or they at least took a significant amount of damage. He is starting to work through the middle of this base, but there is a lot of base remaining. And look at these power core back here, Eric. Ranged up bows, ranged up scatter shots, ranged up multis. Royal Champion joins the party there at the top of the base. He does have a nice little parade through the middle. Queen will take out the defending queen, but he's got to get this one going and he's got to get through this power core. Yeah, that's a very, very dangerous area there. And with losing, I, I got to say, I never considered Rocket Balloons as a potential stop to this attacker. And it's done a very, very good stop job. The, stop the, the Rocket roots. Balloons softened up the Root Riders and they're all gone as he goes in the last couple defenses. Still has a chance though. He's got the Road Champion, so he's still holding the Seeking Shield he's right fine there. Out. I think he gets a three star, it's just the yeah. time. Time is going to be slow here. The Queen is going to pop her Archer Puppet right there and search for it. All four heroes are alive right now, but the Road Champion will get the bulk of the defenses down here, but she's use trying to hold it until use right that now. RC ability. Why does he hold his RC ability every time? Sure. Use it, Damien, use it. <laughs> he pops it right there, oh. and he does hit that last collector. And look at the time. It's still going to come in under two minutes. He keeps it under control. He lost all the rebounders, but all four heroes make it to the finish line. And it's going to stay relatively fast, but is it fast enough? Now, the question is, United Gaming getting ready for their final attack here. Do they throw a little bit of caution to the wind, or do they play a little bit more safe? Because right now, with their time advantage, if they win this exchange, they win a difference of... $10,000. They either win $20,000 or they win $10,000. So United Gaming holds advantage and they could end it right here with a fast attack. If you're able to hold Ninja to about two minutes, that gives you a little bit of wiggle room. It's going to be tough to overcome. We know Ninja can go quick. Let me see if I have some of Ninja's times from yesterday here. Uh, Ninja did one minute, 19 seconds remaining. So a minute 40, and that would put it at pretty much the same situation we had yesterday. We're coming in with hey. Super Dragons with Zap, and it is a fast attack, but Will we see a mistake? We do have uh, some sweepers facing towards the dragons. Let's see what he decides to zap here as he sends it all in. He's got the lightning that can take out the monolith and the sweepers, but he doesn't delay the, he doesn't like do the lightning and then go get the dragon started. He starts the dragons and then switches over and does lightning. Does not wait for the heroes to develop the funnel there. Funnels it on the fly, which leaves his left side funnel a little bit weak, but only one super dragon is split off that direction. And he does now have the blip going into the bottom of the base there with the rock opposed, kind of attacking all sides of the base at the same time. And that's exactly what what they need. Looking pretty good here overall. Everything is going smooth so far, Bash. Short blimp for the Town Hall. The Super Dragon will be able to work through there. Those bows are set to ground, so this base is looking to counter some uh, some Root Riders. Here comes that uh, Royal Champion with her Haste Veil. Hey, okay. We get a couple of Rocket Loons in there. Queen's working. The Dragon should have no problem thinning out this backside. It's really just can the Queen get through these balloons and get that cannon. Oh, wait. The Dragons are coming over to help out. This is looking solid. Look at the time, Eric. Okay, okay. I'm looking at the clock here. Like, passing the one-minute mark here. He's got Ice Golem's chasing down his king, but that's fine. He can deal with that. He can be solid for just a moment. RC can this make her way back that direction. Is, He's got it. No, look at the control. high fives. He's got it. Looking good. Ninja might have just won them the championship with that attack. They're being lightning fast and keeping their attack speed down to an absolute bare minimum. Imagine going into an upper bracket finals, a grand finals, a Snapdragon Pro Series championship, and then you go out on a two all perfect wars and still get eliminated from the competition. That's what we're looking at here. Yeah, you he haven't missed a is single attack. E -drags and he's going to do everything he can. All caution to win. And may maybe, maybe he can set a world record here and get the fastest attack that is absolutely ever going to be possible. And he's going to maybe pull this off here. I don't know that it's even, even conceivable, but I never know. I mean, we'll see. you, you got to lay it all out there. At least give yourself a chance. I mean, our times are unofficial here, so you know we do know that there was a 40-second attack coming into the, or 40-second advantage coming into the last attack. So that was official. Here he goes with the balloons cloning up towards the town hall. Ooh, he misses the clone. Oh boy, he misses the clone here. Oh, look at him. He knows. Oh no. Well, he knew. He knew his back was up against the wall here. Though. Yeah. I think. I think it's safe to say. 
that we have just crowned our North American champion. Seven time championship victory for Nick. A lot of the rest of the team claiming their fifth championship overall. And just some, uh, some, uh, some extra newcomers there like Ninja step into the team claiming his first. Like there are so much, there are so many championship holders on that team, but this attack is not just gonna miss. It is shutting down unbelievably fast. And it is a massive, massive miss here for Jesus as he just had to give any chance at it and the E-Drags are just completely stopped to their tracks. He knew once he missed the clone on the blimp that the attack was over. I mean, he knew it was pretty much an impossible task, so he just tried to lay it all out there. He had the right idea, but unfortunately misses on there. Does save the two-star, keeps his head up. It is technically their first miss, but ultimately it didn't matter either way as we are going to crown our North American champions. United Gaming will win season four of the Snapdragon Pro Series. Joined by the rest of his team, hey. Ninja, I've got to say, congratulations on becoming the Snapdragon Pro Series Season 4 champions. What was the energy like in the room leading up to that final attack? Honestly, we were all pretty calm, but like when they did that fast hit from Max, we started like, we knew we had to do some air spams, you know, because like that's the only way we could counter it. So like, <laughs> we, we locked in, you know, and at the end, we were able to come back with Rigo's hit. And then we had Agent who did a quick hit as well. And that just gave me the motivation to finish it out. And then we have our lovely clout crowd all around here as well. <laughs> I mean, I've got, to, I've got to ask, after seeing that lower bracket final, obviously going into your match, you know, did it create any nerves seeing like a perfect war? You know, they're obviously on form. SE Esports, we're going to bring it to you guys. Um, absolutely not. We were expecting a perfect war regardless of what team was to emerge from the lower bracket. And we had our basis set towards that because what we tried to do was try to slow down their attacks even because we know they're going to three star. So the whole strategy was going into it to like slow down their attacks so that we could be faster at the end of the day. Cause as we saw throughout the entire challenge finals that we've had an amazing hit rate from all the teams coming through and we knew we had to be fast. You guys have been absolutely fantastic throughout this entire competition. I've got to say, I'm going to give you guys the floor. Is there anything that you would like to say to your fans, your supporters, you know, who've been watching, you know, and supporting you throughout this entire challenge season and throughout the challenge finals as well? I mean, all I want to say is that thank you for believing in us. And yeah, we're just super grateful to have you guys. And I'm super grateful for all the people here today as well including the man behind the camera. No, 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 no. <laughs> Show him. Show him. Show him. <laughs> oh, it's gotta be Drew's big head. <laughs> he killed the feed. Well, I gotta say, in, in the studio here, we're gonna give a nice warm uh, congratulations to the Snapdragon Pro Series Season 4 Champions. We're gonna give it up for United Gaming.